Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Total Drama Island 2023, episode two. Uh, yeah, we're already back with another episode of this. I, I, ever since I watched the first at the beginning of the week, I've just been wanting to get to another. It's just... I've, I, I really enjoyed reacting to uh, Redonkulous Race, uh, and just already, it's like, I am back in it plus this is really new like this is a lot newer than redonkulous race is completely new uh cast of characters outside of you know chris and chef it's like this is this is something that is feels fresher and more exciting and plus it's back at the island the classic total drama island style it's like this is a little more exciting for me if i'm being honest uh, but last time we got to meet our, uh, first round of, uh, first round, we got to meet our, um, our contestants. That's the word I was trying to think of. We got to meet our contestants, including, uh, Lauren, <laughs> uh, my current favorite, uh, but that could change, that could change. Um, and then other, even if Lauren remains my favorite, others might end up uh, just joining her at the top for me. Um, and we got a surprising vote off in the first round. Uh, we voted off the hot guy. It's like, that that doesn't usually happen right away, so that's really interesting. Um, but yeah. So, we, we got to meet our characters. I, I don't remember most of their names. In fact, I don't think I remember much of any of their names except for Lauren. Um, but I'll, I'll start to get them down as we go on. Um, we just got introduced to them, got our first challenge, which was fairly simple, honestly. And we find out that one of them has no idea what the fuck this is. Like, that one of the contestants, like, just, I guess, signed up for this and just has no clue what Total Drama Island is. And even Chef is like, oh, you poor sweet summer child. You are in for a ride. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is going to be interesting. Um, we have a bunch of different types of characters, though. Uh, definitely more reflective of the modern day. Because you go back and watch those old, uh, the, uh, the old seasons, and it's like, oh, yeah. Those fit more with back in the days that these came out and everything. But nowadays, it's like, it's a little, let's be honest, outdated. So they made sure that the cast of characters in this was definitely a lot more diverse. Not that they really had a diversity issue with the old versions, but they, they made them a lot more diverse, a lot more interesting. Uh, we have an openly gay character as part of uh, the crew, and he's really serving <laughs> like he he's the one who got the hot guy taken out in the first round like that was that was on him he he he's a schemer <laughs> um bowie i think his name is i want to say I, come on i can use david bowie as a mnemonic device for remembering that <laughs> um and that's actually pretty fitting because david bowie was queer as fuck <laughs> Um, David Bowie was a queer icon, let's be honest. Um, so there, there's that, too. Uh, but yeah, it, it was very much an introductory episode, very much meant to get us into things. Um, I, I went and, like, checked, uh, watched a couple parts from it again since I recorded the last time, and... I still think that Lauren sounds like Tara Strong. Um, I know it's not now. We, we we checked that out last time and everything. It's uh, Kate Griffin, I want to say. Or Katie Lee, something like that. Um, the second voice actress of Alex from Totally Spies. The one I didn't like, if I'm being completely honest. I, I don't think the voice fit Alex. I think it was way too high-pitched. But this kind of voice is very much working for Lauren. <laughs> I will say that. I wonder if she's going to reprise her role for the new Totally Spies uh, revival. 
um, the new season, I guess. If she does, I hope that she's, you know, become a lot better as a VA since then and does the role better. Because, if, again, if I'm being honest, I did not like Alex's second voice. But it, I'm not getting into all of that here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, yeah. So, I think she's done a great job in the first episode making her creepy as hell. It's like, do you scream while you sleep? Uh, no, we'll see. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, and the only character so far I don't like is the, the quote-unquote alpha male type guy. The, the guy who's very clearly trying to be alpha, but is also very clearly a an incel poser. It's like, I hate people like this. Oh my god. People like this just irritate the shit out of me. You have no idea. It's a, it like, even beyond a lot of the toxic uh, political ideologies that they tend to carry, it's like, it's just gross, you know? People who act like that are just gross. It's like, oh, I'm going to flex and, and, and act like I'm a ladies' man, even though I'm probably a virgin. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I, I'm going to, like, just flaunt and taunt everything, and it's just like, just stop. Oh my god, you are so annoying. <sighs> also, they're just almost always sexist and just terrible people. So, yeah. Fun. And, and things could change. He might become a better person throughout this uh, throughout the, this series. I don't know. Anything can happen. We also have two contestants who are exes. And, yeah, I, I kind of side with the girl in it from what we've seen. Because she broke up with him after he cut her brakes. And they, they ran, like, this prank uh, kind of show, like, this little thing where it's like, oh, we pull pranks and do stunts and stuff. And it's like, they ran it together with friends, but in the end, that's going too far. Cutting someone's brakes, especially without telling them as part of, like, this show or whatnot, is not safe. It's it's not funny. It's It's dangerous. It's just stupid. So I don't blame her for breaking up with him. I really don't. Uh, we also have a guy who's kind of just like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Is that just me? I think his name is Z. I think it's just Z. <laughs> um, he's He kind of reminds me of Shaggy a bit. It's like, oh, this guy definitely does uh, smokes weed. <laughs> like 100%. Um, we also have, like, a celebrity lady, um, who, uh, doesn't like getting her face messed up, which I guess that's fair in general, but <laughs> seems to be a defining trait they've given her. I don't know. We'll, we'll learn more about these characters as we go along. Uh, Chris has a new voice actor, um, because I, again, I guess there was some issues with the original voice actor, uh, some drama with him, fittingly. Um, I don't know what it was. I couldn't find any... I, I've never been able to find anything conclusive, but all I know for sure is that he was replaced. And a new voice actor has come in. And I think he's doing a fine job. I mean, it's clearly different. It's very clearly different. It's like, it's not even subtle that it's not the same voice. But it's not bad. It, 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 he's, he's doing a good impression. And it is a good impression. But it's very clear it's an impression. <laughs> you know? But it is a good one. So yeah. I, uh, I enjoyed the first episode a lot. I, I like the continued diversity we're, we're being shown here. And I'm just genuinely excited to see where this goes. To see how the eliminations and challenges and everything continues to go down. <sighs> oh, 
excuse me. And the big question is, will Chris be arrested again? <laughs> he probably should be. <laughs> he should have never been let out of jail in the first place. Or if he... Well, did he break out? I don't remember. I didn't even remember in Redonkulous Race that he got out of jail in the first place, so I, I don't know. I, I forgot that he even got out of jail. Ugh. Um... And I don't know if I talked about this a lot during the first uh, episode reaction, so let's talk about this here. The theme song. So, apparently, I, I, I have now heard that there are some people who, uh, in fact, I think a lot of people, who don't like the new theme. And, and the thing is, the theme isn't really that different. It's the same theme, just with some slightly updated lyrics. And it's shorter, but it's not the first time this series has done a shorter theme. I think pretty much everything after World Tour, in fact, maybe even World Tour itself, had a shorter theme. Um, I believe everything at least after it did. Like, only the first few, like, two or three seasons, I think, had the full-length theme as the intro. Then they just started cutting it down. And so it's like that, if you have an issue with this being cut down, then I guess you would have it before, right? And um, if it's if it's specifically about the lyric change, like instead of like mom and dad, I'm doing fine. It's like, you're always on my mind. It's like something along the lines of uh, like, I'm here to slay. Don't know why these others are here or something like that. I, I, I haven't gotten the new lyrics down but it's like it, it it's the new lyrics are more aggressive they are more aggressive it's less about like oh we're, we're at a fun getaway fun camp stuff and everything it's like i actually think it's more accurate to the series this way though it feels more accurate to the series and the characters to have it this way than to be like oh mom and dad i'm doing fine and all that it's like that the the old theme lyrically didn't really fit the show so it's like this one, the I want to be famous thing still is is still there. So it's like, that's fine. That that fits the theme and everything. But yeah, it's like, I'm saying that a lot. <laughs> I I do that. Just ignore me. <laughs> Ig ignore my weird autistic verbal pauses. Um. Either way, that's another one. Uh. It doesn't bother me. I, I don't mind it. Um, and, and visually, I don't think it's bad at all. It's just, it's just representative of the new season. It's, yeah. <laughs> I don't think this intro's bad. I, I don't think there's really that much different about it. It's just obviously new visuals because new cast. And it the theme song is slightly redone. And, and, and probably, in my opinion, for the better. Because it, it's more fitting. It's like, I, I don't really see the issue here. And I, I haven't heard, like, what the issue people are saying with it is. I've just heard that they have an issue with it. Um, I, I think it's fine. I, I think it works really well. So, yeah. No real issues from me on that. I'm just, I'm very, very excited to see more of this. I'm hoping to, like, really start to connect with some of the other characters. And I, if I'm being honest, I just like Lauren because she's hilarious to me. I don't know why, but I find, like, ridiculously over-the-top scary characters like that to be funny. I, I can't explain why. I just find them hilarious and instantly super likable. Maybe it's just my tastes. I, I, I've talked about how much I love, like, horror-themed stuff in non-horror shows. So it's... And, and technically, this would count. <laughs> um, and, and then, obviously, I, I loved some horror-themed shows growing up, like Courage the Cowardly Dog, of course. It's like... This... The, yeah, obviously, Lauren is right up my alley. Um... But, but there's other characters I'm hoping to learn more about and everything as well to hopefully end up liking. Because that happened with Redonkulous Race. Some characters who I didn't like at first, I ended up loving by the end. Even if they didn't win. 
though they deserve to. But that ha- that happens in a lot of these seasons where the winner isn't the one who deserves to win. Um, oh gosh, I don't even know. I feel like there it really has not been a lot of times where the winner was deserved. I feel like most of the time it's they're not. Um, but that might just be me. Um, also, I wonder if this season's going to have a uh, alternate winner as well. Like, have, like, a winner uh, scene shot for both of the finalists, like uh, Redonculus Race did. Um, that would be interesting. Uh, oh, also, when this was originally advertised, this was advertised as 26 half hours, but there's only 13 episodes. And I found out why. Um, this was something I'd actually forgot about with the original advertising. This is going to be split into two separate seasons. And I don't know yet if the second season is going to feature the same cast like the original Total Drama Island and Total Drama Action did. Um, with adding in like another couple characters, but still. I don't know if it's going to feature mostly the same cast or if it's going to go completely new again. I don't know. Um, but if they do do, like, another total drama action, because this is technically a, a sort of revival slash reboot, if they want to, like, go into total drama action again after this, I would very much welcome that. Very much. Um, total drama action was fun. <laughs> it was just a fun concept. So if they wanted to do that next and bring back, uh, again, most of the same characters with maybe a couple uh, new ones, I would be all game for that. Um, so it's, yeah, this, this season is 13 episodes, but there is, I guess, another season already on the way, basically. Um, I, so I did find that out. Uh, and that, that's exciting. That's exciting that we do already have more to look forward to. So, who knows when it's gonna actually get here, but still. Uh, for now, at least we got this season. Um, we're just gonna get started, though hope for the best and see what uh these characters are going to do next what kind of shenanigans they're going to get into what kind of crazy stuff is going to happen so let's get on it when the screen fades to black pause this redirect and go to the description below follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it come back here to the redirect and resume play because after it fades to black then it fades back in everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. Okay, so now that we've really, like, gotten the nitty-gritty out of the way of introducing our characters and everything, we get, like, a full challenge. The first challenge has to kind of compete with time with that, so it often is, is it's gonna feel stunted it's gonna feel like oh there's not gonna be as much to it that it's gonna be very quick and that's that's normal that's that's that makes sense but with the second episode we get to have our first real challenge we get to have like things really take up the episode and so this time around we get a pirate battle which is just fantastic as a concept <laughs> um it, it, it's just a fun concept. It's, it's really interesting. They're using heads of cabbage instead of cannonballs, which is really funny to me. Um, and we get to see how the different teams strategize. Um, on the frog side, we see that Wayne actually comes up with a brilliant plan of taking out the members of the other team first before sinking their ship as a strategy to, you know, make it so that they don't have the offensive capabilities to stop them. It's extremely smart. And to be fair, like, he's a hockey player and shooting for the pro leagues, like for the NHL. Um, so it kind of makes sense that he would, uh, he would have some level of strategy to him. Uh, it, it's just... You would have to know something about strategy to be any kind of sports player. 
whether it be hockey, baseball, basketball, it's like strategy is part of that. Um, and, and it's and their team sports, of course, too, which actually factors well into this as well. He took charge and he owned it, honestly. Wayne was fantastic, and the entire team did exceptionally well. Meanwhile, the Trouts, they did not. They were doomed right from the beginning when there was the power struggle over who would be captain. And then when Axel got it, she just kicked Ripper off the edge. It's like that doomed the entire team right from the start. And although they tried to give a valiant effort, nothing really worked out for them. They, they, this was a very hard failure on their part. Everything went wrong. And Z tried to save it in the end, but ended up just not. <laughs> and yeah, it's like we find out that Z has a prosthetic leg, that he is handicapped, and apparently was from birth, uh, which can't happen. It's like some birth defects like that can't happen. Um, and that's really cool, though, getting to see a handicapped character on this. Like, you know, that's going to reach a lot of people. There's probably people who watch this series and who are watching this season who really, like, that, that spoke to them because they might be handicapped in some way. So to have a handicapped character who's also just super likable on the show is great. It's great representation. Um, and and, and I, I talk about all the time how I love good representation and not just, you know, queer representation, but all kinds. And... This is something you just don't see enough of. Like, yeah, like queer representation has gotten better. And there are some definite ex examples of handicapped rep as well. But I just don't feel like there's as much, weirdly enough. Um, th there is definitely handicap rep throughout the years with animation and live shows and stuff. It's just, it's not, at le it's at least not talked about as much. So you don't hear about it as often. Um, but yeah, it, it, pretty cool, nonetheless. And we do have our queer rep in this also with Bowie, so. <laughs> and Bowie is also really likable. Bowie might be my second favorite character right now. After, uh, Lauren. L Lauren is definitely my favorite because, again, it's just like, I, I gravitate towards characters like that. Um, but I'm really liking Bowie. Like, outside of just the strategic, uh, move he made in the last episode with getting, uh, the one dude voted off, uh, he, he's actually just a really likable character from what we've seen in this. Also, I love how he keeps correcting everybody in the confessional. It's like, cabbage is not a fruit. That's all I'm here to say. <laughs> it's like, that, that, it's a really funny running gag, and I hope it keeps up. I, ho I hope that keeps up the entire time. Um, but yeah, it's like, this is so far so good. I I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I, I don't know what to expect next. I don't know who's going to be, like, focused on, who's going to be, like, really highlighted and everything. I guess we'll just have to see. <sighs> um, but this was another really good episode. So tell me in the comments below, what did you think of episode two of Total Drama Island 2023? And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.